Today I'm going to be experimenting with oil pastels over acrylics. So I'm a mixed media artist and I help other mixed media artists figure out what you can and cannot do to make successful mixed media art projects. I know it's so tempting to collect like all the supplies, but it so matters the order in which you layer things up. However, I'm new to oil pastels, so I'm teaching myself and I thought I'd share my process of uh, self exploration and oil pastel discovery here with you on YouTube. So this is actually a series that we're in the middle of right now. Uh, episode one was comparing a few different um, manufacturers and brands. Episode two, I did a full length fox, which you can certainly do actually any time of year. It was meant to be a holiday project, but you could really do it for somebody's birthday or change up the florals and make it more springtime if you want to very easily. And today is episode three, where I want to do an underpainting in acrylics and then see what the experience is like putting oil pastels on top. Now I've watched uh, a few other YouTube videos. Some people recommend doing a layer of clear gesso over the acrylic paints and um so I want to explore that but I don't want to like do my whole canvas just in one way so actually in this project that you're going to be watching me today I am going to be splitting it in two so her hair the whole thing's going to be underpainted in acrylics her hair I'm going to um also I'm going to use the clear gesso for and then the rest of the canvas I'm going to treat I'm going to just go with the oil pastels over the acrylics with nothing in between them and just see what the results are and share them here with you. Let's dive in. If you want some extra help keeping all of this supply information straight and layer information straight, stay to the end of the video. I have compiled the 32 page PDF to help those who want inspiration, clear cut directions on what the heck works and what doesn't, uh, as well as a little fill outable sheet so that you can keep track of these lessons here on YouTube as you go through them. So that's going to be at the end. All right, let's dive in. So I'm just going to be working on a canvas panel here and then choosing an adorable little paint color scheme using my Liquitex Basic Acrylics. For any of my club members watching, this real-time version is going to be found in the Mixed Media Society over at Awesome Art School. And you can find more information about that in the description box below. So I'm just doing a lovely little background using this acrylic paint. And then I'm going to draw the outlines first in chalk and then in watercolor pencil and then before you know it we'll all of a sudden be ready to start in with oil pastels you can see she just has like a nice base coat and then I leave her hair um, pretty empty so that I can do most of the filling in and the painting there with the oil pastels instead of the acrylic paint so I can really get to start experiencing the differences over what it feels like on acrylics and over gesso in just a second all right, I'm gonna use this glove. My hands are already a mess. Like now I'll use gloves in a bottle. So I'm using my Mungio oil pastels, super affordable, huge array of colors while my hands dry. I'm just looking over my color palette choices. And uh, I'm, I decided I'm gonna start in her hair. So if I really love the feel of it and it's working really well, then I might stop and gesso everything else. I'm just gonna, that will be the, the starting playground will be her hair. The gesso has dried. I was also watching, um, I was watching another YouTuber doing the oil pastels and saying it's actually way easier. So I'm just starting off this, these dark blues. Like, could we peekaboo some of the paint in there? I don't know, I guess so. That one looks out of place. They were saying like, instead of, I was in my Fox, my first Fox project, I like covered the whole thing and then I blended. And they were saying it's actually easier to blend like right away. So put on, look how different this color is when it's over the oil pastel versus when it's over the paint. That's interesting. So like kind of hurry up and then squish because 
the colors kind of can dry sometimes. And you can also use the other colors to blend. So you're not even like using your fingers, but you can use your fingers as well. So I'm gonna do that, which is kind of start. Yeah, like these are already super, feel kind of dry at the bottom. So in order to get this all blendy, I'm gonna add, oh, I can hear it crunching into the, <laughs> the sand. All right, while my fingers are all, are covered in blue already, I'm gonna continue with her eye makeup first. So I'm, this is the darkest blue. She's got like a real, you know, sexy, all out, super dark base eye makeup on here and over here. Again, I'm going rogue, so I don't have the gesso under here. I'm just going straight on the paint. This is very dicey. Just gonna do, oosh, I'll add a little purple. We don't have any purple in here yet. Just add some dark purple. And do some light purple in the middle. Oh, maybe this is one of those spaces where you can actually blend using the colors themselves. Like running out, out of areas that are free. My whole body is like a oil pastel at this point. Just mooshing with this instead of my fingers because I will not be able to properly moosh that. Not with these fingers. Oh, we can actually make the shading from with our hair. Hey now, look at that. So I am actually just taking my dirty blending stump and making it shading have happened that way. Okay, so by now I've done enough to know the difference and can explain the difference in the feel. I definitely 100% think that blending the oil pastels over the acrylics where there is no clear gesso under it is a way easier. Now I'm a little confused because as an oil pastel beginner, I just keep hearing that you need to have like super toothy paper in order to accept all the layers. But honestly, the having a smooth surface and not having a super textured surface uh, surface was way easier. So I'm not fully convinced I need all this crazy tooth. Now I do know that for soft pastels, that's a big issue. I'm not sure that for oil pastels, it's as important. For example, in episode two of the series, when I was doing the Fox, I was working on very textured cold press watercolor paper. And I do have to say the super texture uh, quality of the paper made it harder, I felt like, to smoosh everything. So in the areas, again, where it was just me, my finger, the oil pastel over the smooth, like, plasticky acrylic surface was awesome. It felt very similar to gelatos, but of course, gelatos are reactive to water, so you can slap a sealant on top. You cannot do that with oil pastels. Oil pastels have to be your last layer. They cannot go under acrylics. They cannot go under sealants unless the sealants are have oil products inside of them, in which case they don't. So we're pretty much done, and the, the, 
I'm 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 full up satisfied to use acrylics over under my oil pastels from now on. Now, my next video, which will be episode four, I want to test out whether there's any difference between using a Prismacolor color pencil or a polychromos, which is oil-based. Now, I learned what I, what little I know about oil pastels so far, I've learned from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, uh, Black Bean, uh, here on YouTube, uh, among some other very talented YouTubers who use oil pastels. And I haven't seen anyone use or mention the use of polychromos, which are oil-based pencils. And I keep thinking there must be, it must be great to use with oil pastels because they're both made of the same material. So subscribe now so you don't forget. And then you can go binge episodes one, two, and then catch four and five after that. So not only do I also want to test oil pencils, but I also have a fixative that I would like to test out as well. I purchased one at Jerry's Artorama that can be used uh, not only as a fixative, but also as a final sealant layer. So I know a lot of people have questions on sealers and fixatives and varnishes and all that goodness. Uh, and the other thing I want to test out is, and I'm actually going to test it out. I think it'll be episode five. So four will be the polychromos oil pencils and uh, episode five will be linseed oil. I want to see if I take linseed oil to this painting, how much can I smooth out these lines? Yep. And then episode six will be that fixative. So that's what's coming up here in the rest of the oil painting series. And now let me just talk about that little PDF I was referring to, that 32 pages. This is what that's all about. All right, but I got to back it up one second. You may or may not have ever heard of a hamburger mixed media system or a hot dog. Those are my two <laughs> favorite ways to layer my mixed media supplies. And I gave them catchy names because there really are like systems. There, It's a recipe that you follow in order. There's seven steps in my hamburger. They all, the series also became a book that's available on Amazon. And I, I can, you can do hundreds of projects using the same seven layers and same art supplies. It's really kind of awesome because it eliminates the potential for mistakes and disasters and you know how to fix things. It's awesome. So that's my hamburger system. So a hot dog in my really messed up mixed media world is any mixed media painting that has four or fewer layers because seven is kind of a lot. Four is easier to digest and there's also like a plethora of different four that you can use. But those four different ingredients the layers and the order of your mixed media art supplies matter very much, very much. <laughs> that's why I take the time to write it down. And that's why I took the time to create this 32 page PDF. One, you can fill in your layers. If you are bumbling around YouTube and discover layers that work, that avoid mishaps that work awesome together, you can fill out the worksheet portion of this. You can also use the 28 different ideas to create your own projects. You can find my hot dog series that I'll link at the end of this video so you can follow along with mine, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I refer, well, that's what I mean when I'm talking about a hamburger and a hot dog system. I have so many cheat sheets that accompany my YouTube videos. Just subscribe whenever you hear me talking about a PDF and you want it, just let me know in the comment section and I will drop you a link. Okay, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna show you what this PDF looks like. So this is the sheet that I'm going to be filling out today. So I'm going to be starting with this canvas panel. Um, and then the bun is like what is holding it, like your first main, main ingredient. So in this case, that's going to be, get a pencil here. So this will be this canvas kind of panel. And I have the last sheet of this PDF is like a hand writable thing. So I don't forget. So acrylics is gonna be my bun. And then the hot dog's gonna be the oil pastels. And I already checked through all 28. So I, uh, hold on, I'm just, before I forget, this will probably be colored pencils. And dot, dot, dot. Um, so this is, and I think there's five, at the time of filming this, I have five like full hot dog, like this is on in real time on YouTube as well. But here is a reminder of what these layers are, but this is actually the whole PDF. 
And these are the ones on YouTube that I've done already, but each one has a different artist. They're a, an example of their hot dog and then their ingredients, so to speak, that they use. So if you want this, just let me know. Just be like, can I have the hot dog PDF? And I'll drop you a link. And it also has the full hamburger system in here as well with all of those layers as well. So I hope you'll join me next week because I'm going to be exploring two different additional kinds of watercolor pencils. These are not watercolor pencils, color pencils. <laughs> and seeing which ones work best with oil pastels. I don't know. Let's find out.